Now on the carburetor, we're going to set the idle. That's the idle screw right there. You want it to where you see the bottom of the barrel, just to two, three millimeters. This one's a little sticky. So I'm going to grab a screwdriver. Okay, that's about that's about where the idle's at, right there. You can take all of this out. Sometimes those barrels get sticky. <clears throat> now be careful not to lose any of the innards. What you've got is a uh, the carburetor barrel with the needle. You can adjust this, but you got five settings. Keep with the main one on a stock kit. Now you put the slot in to where the slot in the washer lines up with the slot in the barrel. All right, you don't want to lose any of the pieces of the carburetor. Here's your pin. You can lean it out or make it richer if you're riding at high altitude. But uh, there's five settings. The one in the middle is how they come stock. Keep it there unless you're doing anything fancier. If you want the slot on the washer, the slotted washer, to match the slot on the side. It's where your little lead beads going. So we're going to put the acorn top nut on there. Give us enough room in the cable. That's why we did our adjustment up there. So put that lead bead right through there and make sure that it clears, goes right through the slotted washer. If you have that slotted washer at an angle, you can have idle problems and it's going to take you hours hours it's going to give you headaches so just make sure it's flat once that spring pops down all right so the slot in, in the barrel we've got a little brass pin it's going to go right through the slot and there our idle uh, screw that we set before we put that through is, is still set we're not going to mess with that until after we fire it up if we need to adjust it from there now we're going to check the slack we're not building this to race we're just building it to cruise but we want to we want to take this like 90 percent of the slack out of the cable so that we get maximum throttle when we need it so see how that's got just a few millimeter slack it's about perfect and i use secure Secure it to the top. Sometimes I run it through the bottom of the tank, but you want to secure it just to keep a good dust so that that's not wiggling back and forth and giving you problems down the road. But now what we want to do on the carburetor uh, is we want to push it all the way up on the neck. We don't want any air leaks. Vacuum leaks drive you nuts. It'll cost you hours of scratching your head and, and we can solve them right now before they even happen because we push it all the way up. There's a rubber thing in there. Uh, some of them don't have rubber things, but e either way, just push it all the way up, tighten it down. And some of the other carburetors, you got a cheap nut, you want to throw it away. These red ones have a pretty good locking system here, so we're just going to torque it down as much as we can without stripping the bolt there. Again, we're going to make sure it's pushed all the way up under the neck. And we're going to get it nice and snug so that it will never wiggle or move or cause you any air leaks. Okay, now we're going to run the uh, clutch cable through the bottom here. Uh, I probably should have done this before, but as I'm looking down here at the angle the cable is going to go through, I can see I've got to 
adjust this eye so I'm going to try to get it in here with a wrench without bending anything. Just move it a few degrees. So we've got the least amount of bend here. And we want the, this is a heat shield spring. That's going to, your cable is going to run next to your head. So we just going to put the heat shield spring on just to uh, keep it from melting the plastic basically. Keep it from eating away into the plastic and metal over the years. That's a retention spring. And then you got to thread it through the clutch arm. Now keep in mind this bolt will go directly into the top of air, but I like uh, this method because you have greater flexibility on which way to angle the screw head to tighten it down. And you can take out all the slack. See that? It's like all the slack. Okay. I crimp it down with channel locks if you have them. They work great. If not, two pair of pliers works fine. And tighten that down as tight as you can get it. I'm going to just grab it with a pair of pliers and just torque it down a little bit more. Okay, now we're going to work the clutch a few times. See how that easy that is to pull? Um, working good. We'll probably have to tighten this up before too long. The new ones, they just stretch out. They got that natural stretch when they're new. But we're going to lock it in there, and then we have a free, uh, or should have a free spinning um, drive gear that we can thread the chain through. Thread the chain right through there when, when we get to it. So we've got both cables working great. They're springing back on their own. They're greased hooked up to a solidly mounted engine. Now we're ready to do the, some of the miscellaneous things like put our uh, CDI on. And this comes with a metal bracket and two long bolts, but sometimes they crack here. Uh, so I just use the tie down straps, some, some good quality 11 inch ones. Harbor Freight sells them. And then I use two sided sticky tape Mount it right there. You want to make sure that you're going to have enough room to run your oops. To run your black and your blue, and keep it out of the way where the muffler is going to be, because you don't want these things resting right on the muffler. If it is, you'll figure it out after your bike dies and see the wires melted. So I'm just going to tack those down for right now because I'm going to thread the kill switch wires too. Now the wiring on these bikes is, is simple. You've got coming out of the engine you've got a black and a white and a, a uh, blue. Now the, you're only going to use the black and the white. I mean excuse me the, the black and the blue. The white one I recommend cutting it off. Do not let it ground out. but. I just cut them off right here so that they don't have a chance of grounding out against the frame. If they ground out, you'll be buying a new magneto for about 13 bucks. You can hook lights up to these, but you're taking a chance of wearing out an inexpensive magneto already. If you do hook up lights, make sure you run a switch so that when you're starting your engine up, it's not draining the juice out of here. After your motor starts, then you flip your, your lights on. But the, Maybe I'll get to that on a different... Uh, different day but for right now we're going to hook up three black wires and three white wires together and get all the connectors right here you've uh, seen easier things on Sesame Street done before so we got three blue wires blue blue and blue and then we got three black wires And we've got our white wire cut, so it's never going to ground out, taking a chance of shorting out our magneto. Spark plug goes right here. 
we're going to tape these wires off. We're going to put straps around there before we're done so that they don't short out against the frame or anything. That way we get a good start every time and good spark going to the spark plug.